Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. I hope everyone has had a wonderful, safe, and healthy holiday season. What better way to start this year than with a UU service? I've been distancing at home, so I look forward to Sunday service so we can reconnect and worship together. Though we're apart physically, we are certainly proving we're not alone by coming together in spirit. I welcome you this morning to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Northern Nevada, where the mission is to grow together in love, faith, justice, and joy. My name is Carrie DeBarger, and I'm so grateful to be your worship associate on this first Sunday of 2021. We have asked everyone to stay home and view or hear us on your personal devices via this Zoom call. Know that we still welcome all to be part of our community, regardless of racial identity, age, economic circumstances, immigration status, sexual orientation, or gender identity, because it is important now more than ever to come together, accept people, and be kind to those around you. And of course, since we are on Zoom, we can welcome people from near and far to join us as well. If this is your first time at a UUFNN service, welcome, and we're so glad to have you. Feel free to contact our office for more information or our website where you can also download a newcomer form. You can sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date on all the activities here at UUFNN. You may notice on the top of your screen, there's a speaker or gallery view option, and you can switch back and forth throughout the service to view as you'd like. But you will remain muted throughout the service and you can make comments in the chat box at any time, specifically during joys and concerns. 
Then immediately after the service, we'll open breakout rooms for a virtual coffee hour in small groups, including one room specifically for newcomers. For today's service, feel free to have your chalice at the ready. And once again, thank you for being with us. We find ourselves at a threshold moment at the beginning of a new year and with a variety of changes on the horizon. May this time together call us to intention around this threshold moment. And maybe we be, we be challenged and supported in bringing our best and highest selves to it. You're invited to access the chalice that you have nearby as we light our chalice together to begin our service. Our chalice lighting words this morning are from Kathleen McTeague. Into this space, we bring our hunger for awakening. We bring compassionate hearts and a will toward justice. Into this space, we bring courage to carry on. Into this space, we bring our joy and our gratitude for ordinary blessings. By our gathering, we bless this space and each other. In its shelter, we know ourselves to be blessed. The next reading is from the book, The Language of Courage and Inner Strength by Sue Mitchell. There are times in every life when we feel hurt or alone, but I believe that these times when we feel lost and all around us seems to be falling apart are really bridges of growth. We struggle and try to recapture the security of what was, but almost in spite of ourselves, we emerge on the other side 
with a new understanding, a new awareness, a new strength. It is almost as though we must go through the pain and the struggle in order to grow and reach new heights. Now is the time in our service when we have the opportunity to share our bounty with UUFNN through the offering. Since we're not physically together to pass the basket, we can do so virtually by texting the number 73256 with the message UUFNN and then follow the instructions to provide your offering. You can also contribute by mailing a check to the office at 780 Del Monte Lane, Reno 89511. The slickest and cleanest way to donate, of course, is to sign up for automatic giving. Contact the office and Kara will send you an automatic draft authorization form. You can also include our Share the Plate recipient, the Verdi Posse, in your offerings. The Verdi Posse is a community organization heavily and lovingly supported as Faith Works by the UUFNN. Their goal is to provide homemade nutrition to food insecure and often houseless neighbors. They have been operating for six years with the support of volunteers and donors like you. Monetary contributions will be used to buy groceries and packing supplies to continue their work. You can designate on your check or in your giving by text. To provide multiple donations, click the add another fund button. And when contributing to share the plate via text, be sure to use the drop down arrow to select the Verdi Posse if that is where you'd like your donation to go. And thank you for your generosity. I've grown up in this congregation and I know it is a safe place for me to express my beliefs and be heard and respected. Being a part of UU has shaped me into who I am today and opened my eyes to a world of opportunity. And I hope to continue to be an active member of our congregation for many years to come. For this reason, it is so important to me that we keep the UUFNN up and running. It is in these hard times when the strength of our congregation shines through. I'm so proud of us for coming together to help our community and bend the arc of the universe all while staying safe. And I'm eternally grateful for the staff and volunteers who are working so hard behind the scenes to keep the wheels turning as we move through this time together. I appreciate Reverend Karen and the board for keeping us safe and being part of the prevention rather than the spread. Thank you to everyone who has stepped forward to make sure our fellowship is financially secure in these uncertain times. We are aware that there are some who cannot make a financial commitment at this time because of the current situation. So I urge those who can to please contribute. Let's start the new year off strong and rally together to support each other and the congregation. I'm feeling positive that with all of us stepping up, we will be stronger than ever. Thank you for taking care of our beloved community. Now let the offering begin.
Please join me now in blessing these offerings to the work of this fellowship, which is helping more people grow in love, faith, justice, and joy. We dedicate ourselves and these our offerings. Our next musical presentation is by our own Bodie Bill Miller, and it's a tribute to Maddie Stepanek. You might remember Maddie. He was on the Oprah show a few years ago, and uh, he, he was actually on the Oprah show several times, and he passed a few years ago from a rare form of muscular dystrophy, as did his three siblings before him. And Maddie was in his teens when he passed, and he was a poet all of his young life, and he had quite a unique perspective on life and love and all things for his young years, which he expressed in his poetry. So I invite you to listen closely to Maddie's perspective in this song called Maddie's Song, a tribute to Maddie by Bill Miller. Waves bring the ocean out to play. 
Miracles everywhere circling us all, keeping our sadness at bay. As the light in our eyes chases the darkness away, we're okay. As the light in our eyes chases the darkness away. I appreciate so much the depth of Maddie's wisdom, especially when we apply it to these days that we're living in. You know, I've been thinking a lot lately about how the COVID experience has changed our relationship with time. The days kind of run together in similar fashion. It's easy to lose track of what day it is. It's like we're waiting for something. We're in a holding pattern. We're in a liminal space waiting for, we're not sure exactly what sometimes. And it's that kind of time that's divided into before and after. Do you find yourself saying that a lot? How things were before COVID, the time before COVID. It's interesting how time gets divided by extraordinary events. You know, we didn't even know that we were just humming along oblivious. And we really didn't even know how to appreciate those times before because we didn't know what was coming. It kind of reminds me of another time similar to that in our family's life when Zachary was about to be born and we had just learned about him that our child would be born soon. And I can remember that Sue and I were pondering it and we looked at our very busy calendars and one of us said, well, I can clear my calendar in one week. And the other one of us said, well, I can clear my calendar in two weeks. Well, two days later, we got a call that birth mom had gone into labor and she said that we could be, bare, be there for the birth so they told us, just go, just go. So we dropped everything and we went and lo and behold, a little miracle named Zachary was born early the next morning. And sometime later that morning in our grogginess and um, in our wow sense of wonder and knowing that everything was different, Sue and I looked at each other and said, I guess our calendars are clear. And it did happen just like that. It was a little like that with COVID, not nearly as joyfully, but a similar change of events overnight that drastically change our lives in ways that would be long lasting. COVID has had such an impact on our lives and the whole world. You know, often when we go through life-changing events, it's an individual kind of thing. And this is an event that has impacted the whole world. It's interesting to stop and fathom that, that it's not just us. It's across the continents, billions of people have been impacted. And I hope that we can feel ourselves on the stretch threshold of changes, of coming out of this in a different way in the next few months or so. We're approaching a real threshold moment. We'll cross over into a new time again in the coming months. And so what that means is we're really at a threshold moment now. 
I had an opportunity to go and walk an outdoor labyrinth in West Reno on New Year's Eve afternoon. And typically when I walk a labyrinth, I try to walk into the center, letting go, trying to let go, let go, let go of whatever needs to be let go of. And then coming out, open the space for whatever is to come. And as I was walking into the center, I also know that with walking a labyrinth, there's no wrong way. You just let happen what happens and be with it. And as I tried to go through the letting go process, as I was walking into the center, all I could think of is what I wanted to bring forward from this time. I couldn't concentrate on letting go. I couldn't think of it. All I could think of was what do I want to keep? And what do I want to bring forward of this experience? What is it that we will bring with us? What have we learned? What have we discovered? How will we shift and change? How will we bring forward what we've learned and use it to meet the challenges that are ahead? What role will we play in all the changes that will happen across our world because of the way that this has impacted our whole world? What role will we each play in what our community needs next? What role will our community play in what our world needs next? Many of you know that I love birds. I'm fascinated by birds. I love to watch them fly and wonder what that would feel like and secretly hope to come back as a bird sometime in another life. David Byrne in his book, How Music Works, talks about a fascinating adaptive quality of birds. He says that birds that live on the forest floor evolved lower pitch calls so they don't bounce or become distorted by the ground like higher pitch sounds might. He says that water birds have calls that not surprisingly cut through the ambient sounds of water. And birds that live in plains and grasslands have buzzing calls so that their calls can traverse long distances. And birds of the same species often will adapt, adapt their singing as their habitat changes. Now listen to this, hear this piece. Birds in San Francisco have raised the pitch of their songs over the last 40 years or so to be better heard above the noises of increased traffic. Birds have raised the pitches of their song collectively to be heard and so they can hear each other above the traffic. I find that just fascinating and I wonder how we might follow their example. In this new year is such a good time for us to ponder in an intentional way, what ways are we being called to raise the pitch of our song? How are we needing to adapt? How will we change how we look at things. I'm quite certain that I, and I'm sure many of us, will never ever take a hug for granted again. How might we show up differently for the world so that we can be heard, so that we can make a difference? How might we take care of ourselves differently. In the coming times, we are called to show up for the world and for ourselves creatively and innovatively. As you know, over the next few weeks, I'll be away on a mini sabbatical. And these are some of the things that I'll be pondering. 
as I get reconnected to myself and to that which is greater than myself, as I spend time in the woods, alone, cross-country skiing, realigning, I'll be pondering these things and I invite you to ponder with me. What is our call in this new world that is coming? How will we bring with us what we've learned and who we've become to the moment that is coming? Who does the world need UUFNN to be? Who do you need our community to be? And how will we create that? How will what we've been through inform our justice work? You know, we're different people than we were before COVID. May we indeed ponder with intention and search and look for ways to show up for our community and our world with grace and with courage, with creativity and with boldness. May it be so, amen. I am particularly connected to birds, as I mentioned, and especially hawks. There are some hawks that sometimes we see around, the, around our church property, particularly on the backside near where the horses live. Two weeks ago, I was sitting here at my desk, which overlooks the parking lot, 
And before, just before worship started, a hawk came and flew into the tree across the parking lot on the pop property just out from my window. And I sat there and I watched it and it was high in the tree and was looking right down into my office window. And never, I've seen birds flying out this window, but never have I seen them perch in such a way that they can look right down into my office window. And it felt like that hawk and I were looking into each other's eyes throughout the entire service. It stayed there on that branch throughout the entire service and flew away just a few minutes after the service ended. I was tired that day. I admit that I was a little cranky and that hawk gave me a connection that filled me with a sense of awe and wonder throughout that service and renewed me in a way that couldn't happen any other way. Perhaps it was a little snapshot microcosm of what sabbatical is about. One of the things I love about hawks is that if you watch them fly, when they glide on the thermals, they don't expend any energy at all. They don't flap their wings. They just rest on the thermals and they're supported and they lean into them. That's what I hope and I wish for us, that we will rest and be supported in a way that we can lean into and feel held. We take these moments to open our mind and our hearts and our intentions for our community prayer time. We share the depths of our sorrows, our joys, our celebrations, our concerns. And you're invited to share those in the chat box in these next few moments. holding in my heart this morning, my dear friend Lucy, who lost her brother to COVID in South Carolina this last week. And we send out our love and our care to the location of some violence in Texas this morning. And we give thanks for a vaccine that is already beginning to increase in numbers in being provided and we have high hopes that that will change the situation in our world sooner rather than later. We gather all of our prayers, our concerns, our intentions, our joys, 
our celebrations. And we hold them all together in the heart of love. And we offer our gesture to one another, one hand on our heart, palm extended outward as our way of saying to each other, my love extends to you. I see you, I hear you. We are all one and we are indeed stronger together. Amen. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out. I want to thank you so much for joining us for our service today and hope that you have received a blessing, something that you needed from this time together. I want to remind you to watch your emails for um, all of our programming and upcoming events so that you can avail yourself of all of our connection opportunities. And please be bold about sharing this link with friends and family across the country who could benefit from this type of connection. If you know of someone that could use some support in any way, let us know that so that we can help folks feel connected and not feel alone in these days. I want to let you know this morning that Aria Overly, who has been our action congregational partner with our faith-based organization is beginning is leaving action and beginning a new chapter working with domestic violence issues in our local community and so we want to take thank take this opportunity to thank aria and bless her on this new chapter in her life Aria has been such a leader and an organizer in helping us be more organized in our justice work. And one of my favorite memories of that is when Aria trained us and organized us to um, work with the legislative session a couple of years ago. And we went down in our yellow shirts and we made a huge splash meeting with various legislators. And in the hallway, people would stop us and ask us who we were. and. Um, Aria helped us make such a difference in some things that happened during that legis legislative session. And so we want to take a moment today to thank Aria and to bless her in this new chapter on her, on her journey. And Aria has asked to say a few words to you at this time. Thank you so much. And I'll make it brief, but I just wanted to really share how meaningful how, getting to know all And thus the impact that you've had on my ability to conceive of how we create justice in our community has been so powerful to me. And I can't wait to carry that with me into my next steps. And so thank you all. And thank you all so much for the time that I've been able to spend with you. Oh, and I was also supposed to mention when I, where I'm going. So I'll go do that too. Um, but yeah, so for those of you who are interested, um, we are still gonna, the action is still gonna be doing legislative work. I was supposed to be carrying that, but now that I'm moving forward, JD is gonna be your contact for the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. So if you all need to get in contact with him, I'll put his email in the chat if you're still interested in being involved with legislative work with action, um, moving into 2021. And um, for me, I'm gonna be moving into the role of the volunteer coordinator with the Domestic Violence Resource Center, um, which I'm really excited about. So I'm going to be, um, training and managing volunteers to run the crisis call line and to uh, lead the thrift store. And I'm just really excited to be able to connect that with my personal story and figure out like the different ways in our community that change is done. And so I'm really excited to learn that and be there. Um, but if you're interested in volunteering, I'm the person you talk to. So uh, I know that I, I think I did see even a couple of you names on the roster when I was looking at it. So I'm looking forward to, to working with some of you there. Thank you all. So Aria, we take this opportunity to thank you 
and we bless you on your journey. We send you with our love and with our care and with our best wishes and blessings into this next chapter. And we look forward to our paths crossing in the community as we know they will. Thank you for your dedication and for your hard work with us. Thanks for being such a partner with Action. And as Aria mentioned, um, we will con absolutely continue our work with Action and we are absolutely interested in making a huge impact once again on this legislative section session. Uh, J.D. Klippenstein, the ex executive director, will be working with us on that. There's a training this Tuesday the 5th and then another one on Wednesday the 13th. You can attend either one to start getting ready for us to organize some teams. All of it will happen on Zoom this year um, or electronically, but we still want to make the kind of impact that we made a couple of years ago and even more. So let's join with action and prepare to really make a difference with the Nevada legislature this year. I wanted to uh, take just a moment to set today to speak a few words from my heart to yours. And that is as I head out on four weeks away to spend some time replenishing and refueling, I just wanna say a word of immense gratitude from my heart to yours for the way that you have held steadfast these last 10 months. You have stayed current in your attendance, in your finances, um, and I know and I trust that you will do that the next few weeks while I am away. And I also encourage you to think of, at this threshold time, how else you might step up. There are some leadership positions and volunteer positions um, in an article in the eblast that I asked you to read and just ponder uh, from that deepest place, from the place that we've talked about today. Um, the caring committee is gonna need some help with some leadership. Uh, and there's various opportunities there. And so I just wanna thank you in advance for all of the ways that you will and are stepping up and will continue to do so, especially these next few weeks. You know, where there is a gap, new things can grow and grow differently. So I look for that to happen while I step away. And I'll be back uh, in just four weeks or so, and we will begin again uh, and look at who we can become together. And I really look forward to that. You're gonna be invited to stay on for a little bit for coffee hour groups. After a closing song, I invite you to take advantage of that time to build connections through conversation. Our closing song is my blessing to you as I step away the next few weeks. So I invite you to take this in from my heart to yours. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. 
No matter where you go, no matter where you've been, you'll never walk alone. I feel you deep within. So I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. No matter what you feel or what you choose to show, I'm always there for you. And so I want you to know that I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. I am sending To hold you, I am sending you light to hold you in love. I walk the path with you. Go slow, dear one, don't hurry. I'll go just like you need to go. There is no need to worry. Because I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light. To hold you in love, I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you May we form our connection to receive the blessing. Indeed, I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. Know that I hold you in my heart as we hold one another. Wherever we go, we are never alone, for we have love between and among each other. Blessed be, amen, and namaste.